Tonight on Crime Fighters, the dark side of the city. I've told you to stop swearing, you've continued. I'm now arresting you under Section 5 of the Public Order Act, do you understand? Yeah. Don't swear at me again. You're under arrest for Section 5 Public Order, mate. Take the smile off your face, it's not funny. In 2002, Sheffield was among the worst 10 UK cities for street crime. Since then, street robbery has been cut by 70% and now it's one of the safest cities to live. Part of this success is down to a team of police officers who patrol nighttime hotspots, building closer bonds with the street community. How much do you have to steal then to get, to, to get your money's worth? Sheffield Community Safety Officers Jim Mumby and Mark Wortley are on night patrol in the city centre. They're looking for a known drug addict they think is responsible for two recent street robberies. We're looking for one male in particular, he's a white male, uh, about five foot ten. He's responsible for two uh, robberies that uh, occurred at the weekend. The descriptions are of the uh, same male. Uh, it's occurred in the Shalesmore area uh, where people that have been walking through have actually been robbed of their possessions. Uh, we just come in a general area search and uh, to obviously uh, have a look for the male. They head to this outdoor soup kitchen to look for him. Queuing up to uh, get something to eat at the soup kitchen. Uh, it's a voluntary service where people come and provide either a hot cup of tea or a meal in some way so they can obviously get some kind of nourishment. It's here for about 20 to 25 minutes, Monday to Saturday. They don't do it Sunday, so obviously it's a long day for them. Because uh, what tends to happen on speaking to them is they'll, they'll last eat Saturday night and the next time they may eat would possibly be the Monday night. When did you last eat, Jamie? Um, well, this morning. Well, yeah, was that the Archer Project that normally yeah, feeds you as well? Yeah, this morning to Archer Project, yeah. No problem. Sausage and tomatoes, it all right? Yeah, all OK. Right. Yeah. What drugs are you on at the moment, Jamie? Uh, heroin and crack. How much a day is that costing yeah. you? Roughly, nah. It used to cost me... Oh, up to 100 quid a day. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I've got myself down to about £20. How did you used to get your money, then, to pay for that, Jamie? Well, I used to, like, shoplift and... Odd commercial burglary, weren't it? So That's right, yeah. You're begging it all to get any of your money, Jamie? No, I ain't got patience to do that sort of thing. No, it takes a long no. time, doesn't it? Yeah. Thanks for your time, Jamie. I'll let you all eat right. your soup before it goes okay. cold. I'll come and Thanks see you in a bit. Lot. Thank you. Where's the bike? How are you, Tony? Fine, thanks. You're currently staying at a flat, aren't you, near London Road? How do you know that? Cos I'm, uh, I'm a police officer, I'm meant to know everything, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. You're just on alcohol, though, aren't you, at the moment? I'm an alcoholic, got... yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm, you... I'm trying to recover. Right, no um, problem. How much are you drinking I'll... a day? As much as I can get. Right, and what kind yeah. of drink? Um, mainly white shite, you know, right, uh, yes, uh, right. white lightning yeah. and stuff like that. If it wasn't for your friend, then, giving you the flat, where would you be? Probably be on end of a rope. Right, obviously that's not good. Because you... I, I am a suicide risk. Right. And Have you slept on the streets much? Cut you uh, two or three years. Yeah. Are you going to get your last sandwich before they pack I will up do, and yeah. drink? Thanks a lot. No mate. problem. See you later. They've just given me a quilt, so I've got something warm to wrap myself up in tonight. Will that make a big difference? It will make a hell of a lot of difference. Yeah, it means I'm not going to freeze my knackers off tonight. We can gain information about their activities, they'll, they'll give us information about all the people who, who are committing crime. If we're talking about the, the homeless population and the beggars, they're, they're certainly victims as well. And by understanding the, the issues that affect them, we're able to deal more effectively with the problems that face the community. We met uh, a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, Colly? Yeah, we did. Or more when uh, yeah, well, well, you had a bit, a bit too much to drink and uh, uh, a bit inebriated. Yes, uh, if you'd like to well, put, it, uh, put it the <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we were. So well, you were out right last Tuesday, weren't you? We came to fetch it early because yeah. Arsenal game. We got it yeah. sorted. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, you, you want you're yeah. a big fella that come in, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it could get 
head through the door. You really? can't get yourself through the door when that small. So what are you up in court for? Drunken disorderly. Drunken and um shoplifting. Theft. theft. He, he, he did try and pinch um, a, bottle of... a, a bottle of port. But that's because of his condition. He, he likes to drink, does Colin. What do you normally drink, Colin? Anything. <laughs> <laughs> How useful is it to have these kind of soup kitchens? These places are godsend, because exactly. if, it were, if it were for people like this, we'd have nothing. Is this the first meal you've had today? Yes, it is. First meal is having three days. We eat our skips at about four o'clock in the morning. We eat, we eat old sandwiches and stuff like that. Of course we don't. We, we eat stale bread, we, we eat everything. We go to Netto's there, don't we, for a shopping? We do go to Netto's when we get paid. But at the end of the day, I'm a survivor. Look, look at this. Look, I've, I've, got, I've got a king-size duvet to eat of a Christian, God-fearing people. The officers then see a young man matching the description of the wanted street yeah, robber. fine, we're not going to stop you doing anything. Sorry to be a pain. We didn't know you were coming, but obviously you've, now you've come, we, we can't yeah, just ignore Sam. it. Sam. Are you still on, still on heroin? No, I'm on uh, methadone. You're on methadone, aren't you, Dave, Tony? Uh, 70 mil a day. Roger, could you print him out, please, and then just tell me about uh, any tattoos that we can see? Just show us that one on your right forearm, Tony. And you can't really see it, so I'll, I'll show you. I mean, I'll show you both like but you can't really see it. Yeah. No, it said mum. It did say mum. Lovely, thank right. you. Right, I'll do. Thank you. The, the reason why <coughs> check, you check you out, Anthony, is there's someone doing robberies. You've come and you match the description. We've just both said that. Right. But we've got a name for him and we know it's not you now. Right. So you, you, you're no, not even I'll in the you, frame. Yeah, I'll tell you so. Shalesmore lies on the edge of the city. Made up of high-rise flats and industrial buildings, it's Sheffield's unofficial red light district. Over 200 women are known to be working these streets. A lot of the residents are subjected to uh, abuse. In worst cases, they're uh, even subjected to assault, uh, sometimes violent assault. Many of the prostitutes use drugs uh, and there are signs of that everywhere, including needles left lying about. We found that 80% or even more of the women we actually deal with are addicted to either heroin or crack cocaine. And therefore, to feed that addiction, they go into the streets to, to earn the cash to pay for their next fix. And it's, it's a vicious cycle which the majority of these women find it very difficult to get out of. PC Wortley joins community officer Jeremy Spencer on a night sweep of the area in an unmarked vehicle. I can spend all day driving around in a police car, moving people on, but an hour later those people will be back. So sometimes it needs myself, my colleagues, to go out, arrest them, get them to court, get you know, bail conditions so they can't come in this area to relieve the community for, for short periods of time. We're hoping to be using uh, the antisocial behavioural uh, orders on the prostitutes. We're going to be using those powers in conjunction with uh, help for the girls because the roots of their problems is drug addiction. But the ones who refuse to take the help will have to be dealt with more sternly. And if they could just keep committing the offence, then they'll be arrested and we'll be applying for antisocial behaviour orders. There's a pickup just going on ahead of us, so we're going to deal with that. Delta 36. I'd like this vehicle stopping, please. I'm in an unmarked vehicle. Stay there a minute, love. You've uh, been seen around the red light area tonight, driving around earlier. Would it come as a surprise to you that she's a prostitute? Yeah. What had you discussed, negotiated? Um, sex for a tenner. Sex for a tenner? Oh, Pardon? Low job for a tenner. Low job for a tenner, right. I must tell you at this stage that uh, I'm arresting you uh, for curb crawling. You don't have to say anything, but it may arm your defence. If you do not mention when question something, it shall let you on in court. Whom you lost in trouble? Um, a while ago, 
Just come and sit in the police car a minute, Leanne. Mm -hmm. It's clear that the two don't know each other, uh, and we suspect that he's been curb crawling and she's been soliciting for prostitution. They'll both go to the charge office uh, where they'll be uh, dealt with for the offence. This lady will be charged and uh, this male may be eligible for a caution. But that's all dependent upon his previous convictions and whether he's uh, in a position to uh, confess to the offence. If he denies the offence, we'll simply charge him and send him to court. There are powers that we can use uh, now to get the court to disqualify curb crawlers from driving. Um, if that's the case, we'll apply for it. Would you like to be with the solicitor this moment in time? No. Well, what time do you have method on? <laughs> What's going to happen now is he's been arrested for curb crawling, admitted that he picked the young lady up, um, negotiated a price for a sexual act, uh, which obviously completes the offence of curb crawling. He's been arrested, uh, be booked in, and uh, uh, be checked on our computer. Depending on what his background is, he'll be given uh, an interview, and uh, if the custody sergeant is willing, he may receive a verbal caution if he's got no previous convictions at all. The man receives a verbal warning, whilst the prostitute is later fined £40. It's night time in Sheffield's red light district, and there's no shortage of women working the streets offering their bodies for as little as £10. The prostitutes uh, will stand in the red light area. Um, they'll, they'll obviously stand by the road because the majority of their custom is uh, males in motor vehicles. Um, they'll stand at specific points and junctions where vehicles can turn off and stop. Down at the bottom there, there's a, there's a young lady stood alone. Uh, it's, it's now quarter past ten at night. Uh, it's not a bus route, there's not a bus stop there. Um, she's shouting down the road to another female who's uh, stood a bit further down the road. It doesn't appear to me that uh, they're having the normal sort of conversation that two people would because you'd come together and talk to one another. She's looking at passing vehicles. The lone male drivers in them are uh, sort of giving us the uh, grounds to suspect that she's loitering for prostitution at the moment. Why is it legal what? in Liverpool to do it in one place, but not here? It's not legal, OK? Really? Right, I'm arresting you for loitering for the purposes of prostitution. You do not have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, saying which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I want to see a doctor. Do you understand? Yeah, you can see a doctor. Come and sit in the see... police car. She's going to the charge office. What for? For loitering. For loitering? Oh. Alright, well, get me for loitering too. Hey? We'll take me for loitering too. You're not loitering, are you? Well, well hang on. What? Hang on, what? Do you, do you speak English, I'll do speak, you? I speak perfectly good English. Right then, well, what the fuck? Loitering Stop swearing if you'll be arrested. All right then, well, arrest me, go Aye. on. Arrest me. I'm arrest not you, Arrest go you for on. what? For whatever you want to, what you've done here for. Do me for the same. You're not loitering. I'm not loitering. No. All right then, well, I'll stand here on the corner now, shall I? Right, then you'll yeah. get a caution, cos you're not a common prostitute. Right, well, I will be then. Hang on. No, fuck off. You've been arrested for what? Oi, I told you to She's stop. A common... I told you, you to told stop. Me Oi, to stop fucking I up. told you to stop swearing. You've continued. Yeah, right. I'm now arresting you under Section 5 of the Public Order yeah. Act. Do you understand? Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Shut Leave up. Leave them with the cat. Don't tell her to shut up. Hey, don't tell her to shut up. Come on. Come hey, on. Stop twisting, will ya? Who's coming this way? Fucking you fucking fucking wanker. Jump in. There you go. All right, you cockney prick. Very good. And at the moment, um, the female is being booked in by the custody sergeant. It will probably be that, uh, given the antecedent history, um, she will be charged and either bail for court or get for court in the morning. But that depends on, on her antecedent history and it also depends on how she is with the custody staff as well today. Uh, and what we do with this this chap also depends on his previous history. Uh, such things as whether he's got um, criminal record for similar offences. The boyfriend gets a 12-month conditional discharge for disorderly behaviour. The girl is fined £40, but within days she's back working the streets. A key part of what we're trying to achieve is being visible to the public, 
build up relationships with the different communities within the Sheffield city centre area. And by building up those relationships, they, they can build up uh, knowledge of the different problems facing the community. Current issues include prostitution, begging, street drinking and uh, street crime. Unless we're out there actually speaking to the public, we're not going to be aware of what their issues are. Back out on City Patrol, PC Wortley has joined colleague Jim Mumby. What have you been up to anyway? I've oh, cool, begging. You've you been begging? Yeah. I have early on, like. Yeah, you had your drugs today? Yeah. How much on a day? Two or three bags of that, like. Two or three bags, yeah, 30 quid. Coming down. Yeah, is that just to keep yourself going or, yeah, or, or is it to get you high? So just to keep your rattle off. How much are you earning a week from begging? Enough to feed me, I always don't feed myself. Uh, so yeah. you're trying for 30 quid a day then, aren't you? Nah, not even that. 24 quid a day. 25 quid a day, no problem. But like I say, it's over there, all shoplift lads in here. Yeah. Day, so at the end of the day, you, you know as well as I know, I've got mm. an habit to feed boys. Mm. What would the wife me do? Can ask him for a spare change or oh, go it, home after they've been shopping and find yeah. houses have been burgled by me, do you know what I mean? Right, chaps. Thanks yeah. Yeah. I'll, see, I'll see you in a week, John. They currently say that they're on approximately 30 to £40 pounds a day. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the habit, you normally have to double what they say and it could be anything up to £60 pounds onwards that they've got to earn, obviously, per day to try and keep the habit. As John's already explained to us, it's not about keeping the habit, it's about keeping him going and he needs £60 pounds a day to inject to keep going just to do the basic functions. The officers are still looking for a man wanted for street robbery. They head to this disused factory that's home to rough sleepers. It's just there. It's, they're all derelict, and as I say, we've been in this afternoon and we've had a look round, and it's in a very sad state of repair. Unfortunately, it's the same story in every room with needles. And It's a place where we know that uh, people are sleeping rough. Uh, as you can see, there's a needle there, half a pool cue, tomatoes, obviously someone's not keen on tomatoes. We've got condoms, we've got needles, we've got milk where someone's obviously uh, been living. Police! We've currently got two people sleeping in this room here. They're not here at the moment, but as you can see, the bedding's down. Uh, there's needles, there's lighters. The hygiene is absolutely awful. Uh, as you can see, the floor's dirty. In here, they've been trying to light fires, uh, presumably just to keep warm. You couldn't actually uh, sit down or lay down here without having a, a severe risk of uh, having pin pricks or needle uh, needle pricks, or uh, you know there will be human excrement and uh, and the like. One, go ahead, but it is uh, substantially warmer than than actually being on the street or or in a doorway. This is probably worse than the last room, to be honest. It did start off as a, a ladies' uh, toilets for the for the factory, but you can see now from the floor. We've got needles, masses and masses of needles. Empty methadone bottle. I think this is bordering on not being quite as good as the open streets, to be honest. I think you'd have to be a, a 10 out of 10 desperate to, to, I mean, I feel pretty uncomfortable just standing here. Uh, I don't think I would uh, sit or lay anywhere in this building. As they're leaving, the officers see a man who's been living in the building. It's your, it's your kit in there, isn't it? Sleeping bags. Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been living there? About a month. About a month, what's it like? Cold. Are you surviving then? Are you getting your money? Yeah. Looks like big issues and stuff. You got your badge? Yeah. How much uh, heroin you on a day? Yeah, it's well, uh, approximately. About a tenner. About a tenner, not double. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else stopping with you in there? There's a few people there. How many, roughly? About three, three more people there. But all sleeping in the same room, or you, you've got you've room. got different they're, apartments? They're different, different parts of the building. Is it like a bit of a family then, a community? Well, yeah, we've got for each other, talk to each other. Anyone giving you any hassle there, or anything? No. No. Get get to meet the working girls. They say hello. Or a, a woman come in with this bloke, and it's yeah. like open door to come into the room. Yeah. 
and you see me, no lady sleeping back, yeah. and you said sorry and I like, turned around and went back out. So they haven't bothered so you. So I thought like she must be a prostitute, but I'm not. Not I sure. I weren't sure, but I didn't know. Her, you know. Heading back into the city centre, the officers get a call on the radio. Negative, mate. It's just some uh, street drinkers falling all over the floor. Roger, we'll have a look. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. We've had a report that uh, there's potentially a beggar on the uh, near the tequila bar and uh, that he's a bit unsteady on his feet, so we'd like to go and have a look at him and just assess what's uh, occurring. There you go. How are you? Guys. Guys. How much you had to drink today, Sean? You've just had a few. Are you a street drinker? Do you sleep on the streets or have you got a house to go to? Are you going to go and get some food? Yeah. We've got to we go into the church. To the... We're going to miss it. All right, then. Two seconds, we'll get him up and he'll be going. Yeah. Do you think you'll be able get to look him. after him? Yeah. Because we're going to help you up in a minute and you're going to go along and get something to eat, aren't you? She yeah, can't stop here. How long have you been with Sean, then? I've known him for about 11 years. About 11 years? That's four, five. Uh, nothing current or impending. Total of 41 previous. Uh, most recently for... for the Indian D. Uh, April 2003, ever. Come on, then. Okay. You're going to have to get up, Sean. Oh, so... Oh. Are you going to go and get something to eat? Let's see if you can pass the walking test. See you later. Go on, Sean, follow her. Go on then. You don't want to get arrested. Go and get something to eat and we'll get something warm. These people in the main are victims, uh, people who have issues in everyday life, who have addictions, who have mental health issues. And the life on the streets is, is a deprived existence where they're simply existing from day to day trying to feed the, the, the habit if they have a habit. Therefore, it's certainly a priority of South Yorkshire Police to help and support these people wherever necessary.